Hi, this is JP from Northern Lights Over Arkham. Uh, this time I will be making a, the year 2020 overview of the Marvel Champion releases and what I think about them. So let's get started. So, uh, Marvel Champion is uh, one year old uh, at the moment. We have seen a complete a year full of cycles. I will be focusing on only the releases that came out in the year 2020. So we already got in the year nine, uh, 2019 uh, the base box and Captain America, Miss Marvel and the Green Goblin. So we are not focusing on those. So the first thing we got in February was the scenario pack, the Wrecking Crew. And I think uh, this is uh, probably the weakest thing uh, that has come out for this game so far. I don't really enjoy uh, the scenario that much. It is, uh, for es uh, especially when playing uh, through solo, it's not that entertaining. And it's quite easy to beat what, whatever you're playing. Well, maybe with Thor and Hulk. It could be challenging. I just haven't had that much of interest to try that out. So uh, that was the first thing to come out in uh, February. Also in uh, February, oh no, in March we got the next hero pack after Miss Marvel. Uh, it was Thor. Uh, and again, uh, I had high hopes for Thor, because Thor is one of my favorite uh, heroes in the Marvel Universe. And I was utterly disappointed in, in Thor's performance. Just that because I'm playing so much on true solo, Thor is just uh, not, not fun to play in true solo. Also, the pre-built deck he comes with is not suitable for, for uh, true solo gaming. It has cards that are strictly for multiplayer, and that is a bad sign. And uh, also, at that point, aggression wasn't that good of a true solo build. There weren't enough cards to uh, really get the aggression builds working. Now Thor is uh, playable with uh, some newer cards in True Solo, especially in Justice. I like playing Thor in Justice, but not as much as the next hero that came out. So, uh, also in March in Finland we got Black Widow before uh, the world, world pandemic hit and everything was delayed. So I think, no, it, uh, this wasn't in March, it was in April. So we got uh, Black Widow in April here in Finland. And uh, it was released in June in uh, other parts of the world, I think. No, uh, I think it was just uh, delayed. And yeah, Doctor Strange was the first pack that was affected by uh, the pandemic. So Black Widow is uh, probably one of my uh, favorite heroes so far to play. I just love uh, Black Widow's playstyle. Also, uh, Black Widow came with the Justice aspect uh, pre-built deck and the playstyle of playing a ton of cards onto the table, just building up your preparations, having like um, eight preparations in play and then if uh, they get mass triggered, dealing a lot of damage all around the table. It's really fun. And it's especially in True Solo, Black Widow is really entertaining to play and are capable of uh, beating, I think, everything on Expert without that much of trouble and also on Heroic. But I don't play that much Heroic, so I'm not talking about that that much. So definitely Black Widow, one of my uh, highlights of the year uh, concerning the hero packs, at least. Then, uh, uh, then we got 
hit with the pandemic all around the world, except in Finland <laughs> again. Uh, Doctor Strange uh, was out in Finland uh, on the let's see July release date. No, it was released in May. Yeah. So again, we got this here in Finland a bit earlier than in some parts of the world. But yeah, uh, Doctor Strange is maybe one of the most powerful uh, heroes out so far. At least uh, he's the most powerful hero out before uh, any new heroes came after him. But uh, I, I really like uh, playing uh, Doctor Strange, but sometimes it feels that He's just too, just too powerful, and uh, even if you build him in a, a specific aspect, you just end up uh, playing <laughs> playing the invocation cards over and over with the help of some of his other signature cards. So you're just blasting enemies with uh, seven damage multiple times a turn. So especially in true solo. Doctor Strange is a really, a really strong uh, hero to play, and I find it a bit dull because it's basically if you luck out and get the Master of Mystical Arts card in your hand, and you happen to have the Crimson Bands invocation cards on top of the invocation deck, you can just uh, start uh, blasting and stunning the villain and defeat the, the villain with that. So. Uh, I don't dislike Doctor Strange, and but I I find it a bit too overpowered for my taste, so I seldom play play with with him. Next, in August, and and this this was delayed. I think uh, now we got, I think we got Hulk at the same time as the rest of the world, so uh, we got uh, the Hulk hero pack. And what can I say? I really love Hulk, but I really hate uh, his hero deck. It's it's not uh, enjoyable to play in true solo at all. I I think in multiplayer, like three, uh, three player, Hulk could be entertaining. Just let other guys deal with the threat and keep smacking enemies around. But in true solo, it's just a pain to play. I, I have tried to make it work. I know people can make it work and can even defeat uh, uh, expert modes with with him, but I, I find it too uh, too much work and too fiddly to be interesting to play. I uh, now and then try try a new build with some new cards like uh, like the recent Ant-Man cards. I tried to make a Hulk ally deck that has a lot of allies cheap allies coming out to uh, basically uh, block the attack so Hulk can keep smashing but uh, that well I, I managed to uh, defeat Rhino and Claw on Expert but didn't manage to beat uh, Ultron on Expert so I, I stopped that after like 15 games total with those three villains so uh, I decided that was enough of Hulk for, for that try. But yeah, that is uh, the halfway mark of this year. I'll just uh, remove this now. So after Hulk, we had a, a bit of a break. Uh, we didn't get anything until September and Oh boy, did we get a nice uh, treat in September. Uh, we received the Rise of Red Skull uh, campaign expansion. And uh, this became my favorite thing to come out for Marvel Champions so far. Uh, it adds two good 
heroes into the game, Hawkeye and Spider-Woman. Especially I like Spider-Woman uh, as a hero. It, the dual aspect makes for some interesting deck building options. Uh, you can get to try out different combinations with the cards. And uh, Hawkeye I haven't played that much, but the games I have played with Hawkeye have been really entertaining, at least for me. Uh, I have, I think, one or two videos of Hawkeye gameplay on my channel, so check those out. I played the Red Skull campaign box through with the pre-built uh, Spider-Woman deck, so check that out too. And what can I say? Uh, if you are just getting into the game, I would recommend you to get the core box and get the Rise of Red Skull campaign, after that get some of the hero packs because this is just pure value to your money. Uh, for a measly price you get five scenarios and two heroes, so with com combined with the core box you have a total of seven heroes and seven, no, uh, eight scenarios to play with. So that's really, really good. Uh, then, right after I, I had played the Red Skull a couple of times, we got a real treat and it was the Once and Future Kang expansion. So, the Once and Future Kang scenario pack comes with uh, one scenario, but it has three really interesting and entertaining modular sets. The scenario is maybe directed more to multiplayer, so as a mainly solo player I was a bit worried that I wouldn't get that much of enjoyment out of it, but um, turns out it's really entertaining as a true solo game also. So I highly recommend you to get this uh, expansion. And the scenario is a bit difficult compared to, uh, for example, the scenarios in the Rise of Red Skull box. So uh, maybe get this after you have played a bit more of the game and have a larger card pool. So a really, really good end of the year uh, scenario. And at that, this point we have plenty to play and we still managed to get one more hero until the end of the year. So we got Ant-Man in October. No, no, uh, actually we got uh, Once in Future Kang in October. I was um, a bit mistaken. Uh, we get, uh, got uh, Ant-Man in early November. What can I say? Ant-Man is really, really interesting and fun hero to play with. Uh, I'm not that big of a leadership um, player, but the cards in Ant-Man's pack really made some new interesting leadership builds possible. Uh, mainly the uh, buff your ally build that you just put upgrades on to allies like the Iron Man ally card or the new Ronin that came in Ant-Man. Also Ant-Man has the first uh, three-sided uh, hero card for the Marvel Champions card game and I actually made a tutorial about how I resolved the sleeving of that card. I know many people just don't sleeve their hero cards but I don't like to uh, touch my cards that much with my uh, hands. They might be greasy or I might spill something or something like that. I'm just a bit <laughs> nervous around my cards, so I like to sleeve everything. But uh, I really enjoyed Ant-Man as a hero. And yeah, that is it. Uh, we got some delays at the end of the year. Uh, Wasp was delayed to January 2021. Also, uh, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch uh, would have been uh, released in uh, late November, uh, early December, but they also got uh, 
and delayed to February uh, 2021. So uh, looking forward to those. And in March we are getting the second uh, campaign uh, expansion, which will be the Galaxy's Most Wanted. So I will be looking forward to those. But yeah, this is my uh, short review of the expansions that came out for Marvel Champions this year. Thanks for watching and until next time.